Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from the finance bill, we'll still be talking about something that has to do with the economy. The Omicron variant, the red list, is still in the news. Uh, well, the federal government says that it has actually uh, it is open to negotiation uh, with the UAE, and um, a whole lot of intrigues are still uh, you know being talked about concerning that. Uh, we have some guests uh, who will be analysing all of the issues with us. We have um, Kenichiko Namani, a public affairs analyst. Also joining us, um, Abraham Great, a social commentator, will be joining us from the UK. Uh, good morning to you, uh, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. All right, let me start with you, Kenetruko. Indeed, we have discussed, uh, you know, this matter or this issue before, but, uh, you know, what we saw later was that the federal government uh, retaliated uh, sort of a teeth for tat. And right now, you know, it is saying that uh, it's going to ban uh, flights from the UK, from, uh, you know, UAE and other countries as well. But then again, uh, it's still talking about negotiation and diplomatic crowd. Would you really say this particular issue is a deliberate attempt, you know, to undermine Nigeria? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's a deliberate uh, attempt to undermine Nigeria. The, the truth of the matter is that... Um, the federal government needs to also look the way of its people and what we want as a country at the moment. You know, like we discussed before, what would be ideal in this particular situation is to uh, um, retaliate diplomatically. It might not be by banning the airlines, but there should be a way for um, the UK, Canada, Saudi Arabia to feel the impact of actually shutting off um, Nigeria just, um, just like that. But then I, I checked this morning and I saw like a news uh, from Vanguard saying that uh, the federal government is looking at deferring their red listed um, uh, of UK, Canada and Saudi Arabia for another one week for them to discuss diplomatically and to put into consideration some other um, things that will make sure that um, Nigeria is out of the red list. Now, but the question is, um, if they're trying to discuss diplomatically um, to remove uh, Nigeria from the red list, why wasn't this considered um, in the beginning of the conversation before? Um, before now, UK just went ahead and red-listed Nigeria. Same thing with Canada and Saudi Arabia. So why do we have to discuss with them before we red-list them? These guys have a lot of airlines coming into the country every single day. And there's increased case of Omicron virus in the UK. There's even a recorded death case of Omicron virus in the UK, but still our border is wide open for them to come into the country, but we don't have access to their own country. I, I feel like, I mean, this is not a balanced equation. So at, at the moment, whatever they want to discuss diplomatically can happen, but after Nigeria goes ahead to ban these countries or red list them um, from bringing in passengers into our country. Okay, okay so uh, let's bring in Abraham Gray to this point in time. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you very much. Good morning to you. All right. So you had the position of um, Namani, and he's saying that first, uh, Nigeria should actually also consider the fact that this, uh, as much as you're saying, let's get into diplomatic talks, it's okay to go ahead and, you know, put them on that red list, uh, restricting them in the first instance. And also saying, I think he also mentioned the fact that, yes, um, there are all the means to um, going through this particular action or retaliating or, uh, you know, taking action towards uh, some of those countries that have put us on the red list. Do you agree with his thoughts? I understand Mr. Uh, Inamani's uh, position, but I want us to understand that there are certain words that we should not be using. They don't help diplomatic relationship. When we're saying ban, when we're saying things like uh, retaliate and stuff like that, for bilateral relationship, these are not words that actually enhance or help negotiation. Um, and the position of Mr. Inaman is actually very correct in, in terms of if we also do not take any form of action, we will always be uh, taken lightly. But here is it. Here is it. We are as a as a country uh, and sometimes as a continent, we are always uh, you know prone to the knee jerk reaction. We need to have a retrospective and we have to have introspective actions in place. We need to be able to plan ahead. Now, let me tell you something about the UK's reaction to Nigeria. Uh, I think this all started from Canada, 
where Canada noticed, uh, you know, something is going on around the world, and Canada, for one, cannot take any risk. I was in Canada a few weeks uh, ago, and you cannot even eat in a restaurant unless you show your certificate. In, in Vancouver, you cannot go into a restaurant to eat unless you show the certificate that you are vaccinated. If not, you have to order your food in. Now, these countries are not, I don't think they are particularly just looking at Nigeria. But when you look at it, here's the stats. We have 200 million people in Nigeria. Less than 2% of us are vaccinated. I mean, supposedly. That's, I don't know if the stats are correct, but that's about the fact that we have out there. Now, if this nation are aware of this, the UK have achieved over 80% vaccination, uh, vaccination. Ghana, our neighbor, is over 80% vaccination. Now, I'll tell you one thing that Ghana has done. Ghana did not ban people from coming into their country. What Ghana is saying is that you come into Ghana, you will be vaccinated at the airport if you are not, or if you're traveling, we will vaccinate you. We, we need to come together as a nation and understand that we should not be used to emotional reactions. In Nigeria, we react first, then we think later. We should be able to plan five years' time. We'll be able to plan the next pandemic, uh, the, the next variant. African countries should be able to sit down together and find a solution that puts us in a position to be stronger on the negotiation table. The reaction uh, 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 strategy is always not the best. That's, I mean, that's my take uh, at the moment. Okay, right. but um, j just as, uh, you know, before I let my calling come through, uh, you have said that, you know, there are some words that are not good for, uh, you know, diplomatic relations and talks. But should we be concerned about the words? Because this word describes the action. What the federal government has done has re, uh, retaliated. So you have reciprocates the same action. I mean, these are actions and these are words describing the actions. Uh, so are you saying that the federal government shouldn't have reacted uh, to uh, the same reaction that she got on her country? Because it feels like, I mean, it, uh, it feels unfair if you look at it. Not the fact that we're in Africa, we're Nigerians, but for the fact of fairness and equity. So you want to look at it scientifically. You want to look at it in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, those countries that have more cases of the Omicron variant. And the fact that Nigeria recorded just only two cases or thereabout, and uh, we have ourselves on the blacklist. And so it feels like it's an attack on the continent. So are you saying that, you know, Nigerians shouldn't have reacted? I, I'm not saying that uh, at all. And thankfully, you use the word reciprocate. I would rather use the word reciprocate rather than retaliate. So in terms of uh, engagement uh, in, in uh, diplo diplomacy, there are certain words that just do not help. It, it makes it look as though we're in a banter. We are in a, uh, in, we're striving with other nations. But what I'm saying in essence is we should be, before this, this ban, we should be able to, I mean, have relationship with other nations where we are keeping a tap on things. Where is the stats that, that Nigeria is following on a daily basis? If the nations are looking at us, what are the measures that are there in the public place? What websites are there to give people the respite to know that I'm flying into Nigeria? I'm safe. Now, I know this because I traveled into Nigeria every five weeks. I know that Nigerians are safe, but we, be, we rely on spiritual, you know, uh, we rely on faith, we rely on emotion, but we need stats. The nation that you are talking about did not just isolate Nigeria alone. I'll give you an example. Last year's Champions League was to be played in Turkey this year. I mean, sorry, this year. And that was in the time that Turkey was on the red list. And guess what? The UK put Turkey on the red list. And because of that, they have to change the venue where that will be played. This has got nothing to do with it being the, the fact that Nigeria. However, there is a case that I have against the West, which is this. Omicron did not start from Africa. It did not even start from South Africa. Omicron was discovered or recognized in South Africa, meaning that someone uh, you know, came in with that variance in that country. Now, the West also should work with our nation, should work with us to find solution, not just throwing that at us. So in terms of retrospective or, uh, how do you call it, 
reciprocate. We should be on the table. Okay. And if at the end of the day, that table will not turn in our favor, we can then have other measures like bans. And we don't only have to ban, uh, 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 ban you know, flight and what have you. Whenever you're on the negotiation table, always look at where you can grab your opposite at the throat. I don't think banning flight is the only way that we can show the West that African countries are ready to negotiate in a different way. There are other things that I think. All right, thank you, um, Abraham. Uh, let's uh, bring back um, Kenichuku and the money right now. You've all heard them um, the position. But my concern right now is that negotiations are run. Nigerians have still been uh, uh, some still stuck abroad. Some of them who may want to come, you know, this season, this you try to visit loved ones or for some transaction. Even those who are here who would also want to travel out, you know, to do transactions and other other things. You know, they are just. Uh, left um, in abeyance as it were you know so since negotiations are on what should we be doing in the immediacy because right now it's as though you know nothing is happening it's as though we just keep on losing monies and um, um no one is seemingly you know talking about um, the amount that are, that have been lost on a daily basis okay um thank you jay so first of all i'm going to address uh what abraham talked about Abraham mentioned that using the word retaliation um, is not healthy for diplomatic discussions. So I, I will take that back, and I want to agree with him slightly on that. But the word red list is also not good for dip um, diplomatic relationships because it, it puts stigma on a country. When you say you red list a nation, you red list Africa, that is also um, synonym to retaliation or whatever the case may be. Whatever impact you think the word retaliation is giving to um, diplomatic relationship is the same impact red list as a word is going to give to Nigeria, especially in the face of other countries. Now, Nigeria as a country should not be underestimated by these Western countries, like you rightly mentioned. You say you come into Nigeria every five weeks. I've lived at least a great number of six years in Nigeria since I moved back to Nigeria. I've lived in these Western countries, but I still prefer to live in Nigeria, and there's a reason for that. And the fact that we have to think Nigeria and also make sure that we position Nigeria to be in a more advantageous position than these other Western countries. Let me take you back to the war between, um, to diplomatic war between China and America. We all saw how it, how it came out. America started it by, by, by President Trump, and then China retaliated. Sorry to say, China did not negotiate. They retaliated. And then America went for sesame seeds that they know that China needs a lot of sesame seeds. But then China, what did China do? China focused on other countries because they buy sesame seeds a lot from America. America depends on sending their sesame seeds to China. So China decided to boycott sesame seed importation from America and push it down to other countries. And that's why we saw a lot of surge in Africa um, some companies coming into Africa to buy sesame seeds as of that time. So when you look at this holistically, then you also think about the fact that we've had malaria for so many years in Africa. Why is there no vaccine for malaria? Because they say it's an African disease. They see it as, as a disease that we bring from Africa to these other countries. Now, these are the things you have to look at for you to be smart diplomatically as well. These countries are saying that Omicron virus originated from Africa. You are right, it did not come from Africa. But then they are trying to make it an African uh, thing. So what do we do in return? We're not saying that we should go ahead to say that um, we want to cut all ties with this country. All we're asking for as Nigerians and as Africans is that if you have red-listed Nigeria because we are not following all the COVID protocol, we don't have a problem with that. But then we have to go ahead and red-list your country because your country has a high number of Omicron cases, and that means our country is very porous. We don't want to receive people from you guys, because you guys are going to end up increasing the number of Omicron virus in our own country. So ideally, what we should do is to cut the influx of people from these countries into our own nation so we can put our house together. That is what it's all about. This, this is not a war, but then you are making us open our eyes to put our, our head in the right direction. Anyways. And if you're saying, Abraham, that this is not targeted to Africa, then do your research much better. Because this is just an African thing. Look at Germany. Look at, uh, look at other neighboring countries, Lithuania, 
other countries that have Omicron cases. What has um, UK done about that? Nothing. So what I'm recorded one death case, and still we haven't recorded any death case of of, 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 of the virus at, at the moment. All right, so Abraham, will, Abraham will bring you in in a bit, okay? Uh, because uh, for the want of time, we're coasting down in no time. But just to put out that the fact that we, we don't have, you know, guns, the conventional war, the fact that we're not uh, seeing bullets fly across our head doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we're not experiencing a war, okay? But I, I do not know how diplomatic the actions of some of those countries have been towards Africa and Nigeria. Uh, just like um, uh, we have Ken Namani saying already that, uh, the fact that you put a country on a red list, not following the scientific methods and all of the procedures. Uh, but let's move away from all of that conversation. Now that the federal government is initiating some diplomatic talks, what kind of conversation should we be having with these countries? The United Kingdom, Canada, amongst others. Uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on that, Abraham Great. I think the kind of discussion we should be asking is to understand how did these countries, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, we should know why these kind of countries have the list that they have. The UK had the red list, the green list, uh, and the humble list since March of 19, uh, 2020. They didn't start today. And they actually have rules on how a nation can enter into the amber list. Nigeria was at one point on the amber, and later on we get into the green list. So I don't think this is an attack on us per se. Germany at one point was on UK's amber list, almost on the red list. China was at some point on the UK um, red list. I don't think they named these for Africa. I was in Dubai and I came back into the UK a day later, just one day I would have been stuck in Dubai because Dubai was on the red list on the Monday. So that what conversation me. should the federal government be having with these countries at this point in time? We're talking about mm -hmm. the diplomatic talks. The UK should be on this, I mean, sorry, Nigeria should be understanding what do this country, what, what do they want us to do? In what way can we make our own statistics or our own, the health of our own people or our space better for people to enter into? Nigeria should be having a dialogue with them to say, how can we work better together on aviation, on health, to make the life of people, travelers, safe? We're not just to react. We should be concerned about the global health. Like my colleague has said, there is also a trade war that is going on. This whole thing started from a trade war. So on the matter of trade, we should also have a bilateral relationship that means that if you do this, we may I mean we we may we may uh how do you call reciprocate this way. But all of those things would have been a policy that has been signed that has been agreed, so that when everybody is pressing the button, it doesn't seem like a retaliation. All right, thank you, um Abraham. Um Kenetruku, can we get your final words on this particular discourse? Okay, um, so just to chip in a little bit, uh, Abraham, remember that the visa, to issuing visas to Nigerians have been cut off as well. If you say that this is not a deliberate um, attack on Nigerians, also bear in mind that you don't really list a country and also stop issuing visas. You can also decide that the, the, the citizen shouldn't come into you, especially when you put a £2,000 um, um, fee for um, isolation. Why then go ahead and um, and restrict or stop the issuance of visa to Nigerians? Because you know we will still come regardless. Now, going back to your question, Jay, on what we should be discussing at the moment, what we should be discussing is the fact that Nigeria needs to come home and think about what is in need for us. What are we contributing to the UK? What do we have on the table? Because for you to have any dis diplomatic discussion with any nation, you need to understand what you're doing for those nations. Mm -hmm. What we're doing for countries like UK, um, Canada and so on and so forth, is that our bright heads are actually moving to these countries. That is a very, very big card that we have at the moment. Nigerians who are doctors, who are pilots, who are engineers, and who are this and that, they are all residing in the UK and in Canada. Now, these people are contributing massively to their economy as well. Real estate investment is booming in the UK and in Canada because of Africans and Asians. So these things are what we have to come home to discuss and say, okay, we are doing this for your country. Now, if you think that we're not doing this right in our own country to, um, for us to get uh, the red list, then you should also come and become our technical partners in making sure that we have our books right. 
So if what we need to do not to be on the red list is to do this, but we don't have the capacity to do that, that means because we have all the ways that we are benefiting your countries diplomatically, that means you should come to our own country and help us put our book together. That is what diplomatic relationship is all about. You do this for me, I do this for you. And we've been doing a lot for these African, uh, these Western countries. So, so some of the production they have in their countries, the raw materials are coming from Africa. So they, they, need, they, don't, they never put this into consideration. <clears throat> they only go ahead to protect their own countries without thinking about what countries like Africa and Nigeria is doing for them at the moment. So I think a whole lot of responsibility <clears throat> lies um, on our hands as Nigerians to come back to actually remind ourselves what we are doing for these countries. Because if we're not if we're not organizing our books, organizing our table, right. we definitely will not have any card to play. All right. I like you. to say that the lift, the ban will be lifted on Sunday, most likely. The UK review its policy every three weeks, and I'm sure you are aware of that. Also, the UK did not ban visa; it bans visitors' visa application for that three weeks. Every nation needs to take its own responsibility. And we should stop this blaming the other people. We put our house in order and we put our best foot forward. All right. Thank you, Abraham. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, Abraham. Abraham. Well, we have Very to let, can let you Gentlemen, go. we have to go now. We're really out of time. All right, uh, the, the conversation was becoming very more interesting and heated, but uh, we have to go uh, at this moment because uh, we stand and by for the news. We must say a very big thank you to Kenneth Nnamani, uh, who joined us from Abuja, and of course, Abraham Great, who also joined us from the UK. And we've been looking at the red uh, list, only convert, and uh, what we should be doing in terms of um, diplomatic relations. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch as well. My name is Justin. And I am Seboko. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa and on YouTube, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Do have a great Tuesday morning.